there is life on other planets? Do you think there's life on other planets? Oh, I don't know. Would you like to think about it for a second? No, oh, not really. <laughs> Tell me, do you think there is life on other planets? Well, I'm not quite sure, but I suppose there would be. No, you seem to definitely. You seem definitely. definitely. How do you see this life and where? Oh, I've seen a flying saucer. You've seen one? Yes, when definitely. At Lane Cove. When, when was this? 1953. You don't think this is a figment of your imagination? Mm, several other people with me saw it. You all had the same figment. What did it look like? It was standing up there still. Just suspended in space. With colours coming out. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. And today's episode, we are going to be showcasing progress on the Barnfind IS that was sold to a very lucky gentleman in the UK. So if you guys want to see more, stay tuned. Right. So if you guys remember, that's how the car used to look. This is how the car currently looks. We've actually started the restoration process and we've been focusing intensely on the bodywork and getting the car straight. So there has been a few hidden surprises. However, the car is actually in much better condition than I actually thought, with very minimal rust issues, uh, which again is a surprise because I expected the car to have a lot more rust, but it doesn't have so much rust. It's more the previous body repair that was quite bad. Uh, but we are attending to that now. So first up, you'll notice I am standing in where the engine used to be. We've actually stripped this car down completely. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm actually quite happy at the way we're doing the, re the restoration purely because now it gives us an opportunity to replace every single nut, bolt, clamp, etc. on this vehicle, which is what I'm looking forward to. Now you'll notice so far in the front, there's no valance, there's no cradle. The reason for that is if you remember in a previous video, you will see that the cradle was a problem. So like Jeremy's car, we needed to replace the cradle. So we are in the process now of replacing the cradle and the front valance and trying to straighten out the car. Uh, so that's our first process, which is the panel beating and obviously whatever rust repair etc we need to be done that takes the longest um, as far as the body as far as the, the the preparation goes as far as the painting goes the car baking flatting polishing that doesn't take as much as the panel beating work because obviously the car needs some work so i want to show you guys exactly why i'm impressed with this car so come have a look here so a lot of the times you'll find that these cars tend to rust by the firewall and by the battery tray. This car has absolutely no sign of rust by the firewall or the battery tray, which is a common E30 issue. This tells me that the car was kind of well looked after, um, but I'll show you guys the two rust spots that I am worried about. So there is a bit of padding, there is a bit of a shield here for your gearbox and uh, stuff like this, which we are going to remove. So once again, whatever part we can replace with brand new original parts, we will. Whatever we can find an alternative, uh, a good brand new uh, BMW part, which is obviously a generic part, we'll do that as well. But most of the parts here are going to definitely be brand new BMW parts. So once again, front end has been stripped, brake booster has been taken out, uh, steering rack, uh, you name it, the complete suspension. So this is literally just the shell. We've even replaced or taken out the wiper motor, the electrical harness. So everything needed to do a proper or a full on nut and bolt restoration has been removed because once again, this is a very high end build. And as we go along, you guys will see and you guys will notice that. So I want to take you guys to some of the body work, which was a little bit of, I won't say an issue, but uh, something that we definitely need to attend to is uh, there's literally only two rust spots on this car. Your door, bottom of the door has been rusted. So normally your MTEC panel comes on here. And if the MTEC panel is not fitted and sealed correctly, if it rains, the water tends to build up here 
and the corners of your doors tend to rust. So this side has got very, very minimal rust. So this is actually a quick fix for us to do. Um, so I'm not too stressed about that. What part did stress me a little bit is that the previous work done on the car, there was a lot of body filler in this area here. But what we are aiming to do is we're trying to take the car down to metal. The reason why we're trying to take the car down to metal is because we want to remove the previous body filler repair work, do the proper panel beating work. And uh, obviously we need to give the car a rust coating. The reason for that is purely because this car is going to the UK. So in the UK, the cars tend to rust a lot. Government or whatever puts salt in the road to help with the snow, etc. Um, so that tends to allow the cars to rust. So we definitely need to prevent that. So we're building the car. So when the car gets to the UK, it can last according to the UK's climate. So once again, this quarter section got a lot of dents, which was repaired with body filler. So we are obviously going to change that and we're going to be doing proper pinning and filing. We're going to do proper dent repair, etc. But overall, I'm happy with it. I, I expected the car to be worse. I'm not stressed at all. For me, once again, I sold the car on the basis that I am never ever going to be able to build it for myself. And also, I've built a very good relationship with the owner. You guys will get to meet him in a bit. But let me take you through the car and then I'll get you guys to meet the lucky owner. Let's go over that side. Now guys, for me, I always look at positives, all right? So one thing that impresses me is the flow of this car. So the flow is actually in very good condition. I expected it to be worse, but it's not in bad condition. It's got a lot of its original rubbers, grommets, uh, clips, uh, harness clips, that are still intact, which tells me that this car is actually not as bad as we thought it was. So once again, you can see everything has been taken out from the fuse box to the brake booster, the clutch master cylinder, the whole steering unit, cubby dash, etc. And we're going to town. We actually need to remove this also. You guys must remind me, I mustn't forget to remove this. So the plan ideally is once again to get the cars body work done and then we're going to obviously uh, do the preparation the rust uh, the rust treatment etc and then we are also going to soundproof the complete car so we're going to soundproof the doors uh, the rear panels the roof i'm going to soundproof the floor i'm going to soundproof the boot and by the firewall the reason why is because we want to eliminate the road noise um, and also make the car feel tight uh, or we are going to be putting a small alpine sound system in for him You know, so that will obviously help as well with the, uh, with the acoustics of the car But overall super happy with the car firewall looks amazing uh, Car is actually not in bad condition requires a little bit of work at the back But it's not as bad as I thought it is our main problem is here common problem with e is I've seen worse, this doesn't look as bad. So our intention is to cut out and we're going to replace it with another panel. Normally we replate, but I've got a donor car floor which I'm going to be using on this section here to kind of give it that OEM feel. Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically the worst rusted part on this car. However, one thing that frustrates me is all the wiring harness was previously painted, so I'm obviously going to have to clean this up or we're going to have to replace it. Um, it's even been painted on the inside of the door, so this is something that is going to take some time to uh, do. It's a, small, it's a small job, but it, it has a big impact because, I mean, it looks terrible, uh, so it's definitely something we are going to do. But again, to show you guys the extent of, of how far we went, we removed the door switches, we removed the harness, literally everything that we could remove. Um, again, car was painted terribly, so we're gonna have to clean this up. We'll probably acid dump it, just to make it look much better. Uh, but I'm quite happy with the car. I really like it and I'm really enjoying the progress. I hope you guys are enjoying the progress. Um, the other quarter section as well on the rear, was also something that we needed to repair. So the car had a lot of body filler. 
and um, again we need to remove the body filler and we need to do it the correct way and also this is a very high-end bowl so we need to make sure we don't do anything that's half not saying we do half jobs but again you can have a look at the dents the dents will fold in with body filler instead of being knocked out and repaired the correct way so we got to remove all of this now and basically the next time you probably see the sky it will probably be fully down to metal and we would have done most of the panel beating the rust repair etc um, so yeah enjoying the build really excited it's progressing nicely once again i am going to be delivering this car personally to the uk so uh, as soon as the car arrives i'll fly down and do a handover looking forward to it excited uh, can't wait can't wait to finish this car like every other car that's in the shop um, but yeah and and also for me it's it's so weird certain clients you meet you just click and the bond is there and i want to introduce you guys to the owner so check out the interview and then you'll understand why i have such a liking to him okay guys so i'm about to introduce you to the man of the moment everyone's been wondering who i sold my barn find is2 and i know i'm gonna get grilled for this but most of my clients do become my good friends and my good buddies that's actually the truth so I'm going to introduce you to Sandeep all the way from the UK. How are you doing? I'm doing good, thanks. Good good. Flew down for some family time and also to check out his barn find IS. So I'm going to ask him a few questions. You can see he's got a big smile on his face. Um, I don't know if he's smiling purely because his car is in pieces. I was stressing about this moment. Um, so what's going through your mind right now? Um, I kind of expected a complete rebuild, so uh, I'm not too surprised. Yeah. Um, but it is quite unnerving seeing the car because when I saw it originally, it was a complete car, <laughs> but it's now in pieces, as you say. But it's all part of the process. And yeah. I can see you guys are taking the time to do a really good job taking it down back to bare metal. Right. Um, and really excited to see the end result, see how it turns out. Nice, 100%. So, my question is obviously, you being in the UK, you have access to cars that we can dream of owning, um, but the UK does not have the 3 to 5 IS, as you guys know. They do have, but it's like, kind of like a motorsport. It's a motorsport edition, yeah, which is 2.7, etc. Yeah. So IS is unique to South Africa. So why an IS? Uh, I think, like most of your um, clients, it's uh, it's been a childhood dream. Yeah. So, you know, growing up as a kid in, in Lens, um, you know, you used to hear the sound of the engine with the guys driving by. Yeah. Um, it's always something that I admired, always wanted to have one. And um, I think the stars just aligned, you know, met you and you had one for sale. In fact, I don't even know if you had it for sale, but yeah. maybe you decided to sell your it to me. It was my it chance, was my time. actually. So yeah. I think um, it was just meant to be. 100%. Yeah. Perfect. And what are you most looking forward to on the car once it's completed? Um, just looking forward to the drive. I mean, I just want to take it out for a drive and listen to the sound of that engine. Um, I'm keeping it stock standard Original OEM, OEM. You know, with a little bit yeah. of, of extras that we discussed. Yeah. But um, I think just keeping it as original as possible. It's always been a beautiful car. And just retaining those original qualities, I think, will, uh, will be helpful. Cool. Yeah. And, and do you plan to sell it in future? Are you building it because you want that inner child to relive that? It's, it's moment to keep, or not, not it's to, to keep. resell. It's okay. to keep. Uh, I wouldn't add it to the collection. Um, right. Definitely not to sell. Um, right. Something to enjoy and appreciate. And, and, you know, hopefully the kids will enjoy it one day as well. Nice. But, um, yeah, I love it. So it's something that I'll cherish for a long time. Awesome. So I heard collection. What else is in your collection? Uh, I've, uh, I've got a couple of Mustangs. Um, I've got a Merc Pagoda 280 nice. SL. Nice. Uh, just got a recently acquired um, Alpha GTB6. Nice. So yeah, a few cars. Not 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 as big as yours. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> no, but but I won't lie. Your collection is filled with quality. Yeah. So is this your first classic BM in your collection? For sure. Yeah, the first one, and also the first complete rebuild. Everything else that I've bought is been original. I always had some work to it 
before uh, I bought it, but this will be the first full rebuild from scratch. Okay. Yeah. Well, so it makes it unique and special in that sense too. Nice, 100%. Yeah. And, and the main question, your family is here. Yeah. Um, how did you convince your wife to allow you to buy another car, number one? And to buy a car that you technically did not see all the way in South Africa, like I would, I'm trying to think how would I convince my wife, but how did you get that right? I, I think um, this is this is where I scored the brownie points. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> no, she, look, I have an amazing wife who, uh, you know, understands my passion and, and wants to support me. And I think, you know, we'll enjoy it as a family, looking forward to the family trips on a Sunday and, and really just enjoying the car. So, and, and the thing is, I bought it without seeing it because I saw the videos. Yeah. I kind of had a sense of what the car was about. We obviously had lengthy conversations yes, about the car yes, and the yes, condition did, yeah. and how much work is required. Um, but I have complete faith and trust in you and the nice. Chicano's team. So, thank you. I know it's going to be uh, it's going to be a unique, one of a kind rebuild once it's done. It's going to be like the closest to a brand new IS you can ever get. Perfect, hundred yeah. percent. You heard that, guys. Uh, looking forward to this build. I unfortunately didn't have the time to build it for myself. Uh, so the best thing for me to do instead of the car standing and getting dilapidated, that's a big word. Nice one, Chip. Higher grade English there, I'm proud of you. So instead of the car getting dilapidated, I thought to myself, how's that word? Excellent. You think we can use it in a sentence? For sure. Okay. <laughs> that Chev Lumina yeah. panel looks dilapidated. For sure. Okay, now you're done. <laughs> that Chev Lumina looks dilapidated. <laughs> That's the word for today. <laughs> Cool. So it's again an honor because the way we're restoring the car is exactly the way I would want to restore it for myself. And I'm happy that out of this transaction, I gained another good buddy. Like you guys always know, I gained another good friend and likewise, vice versa. So um, one last question, right? Yes. What's next after this? Like you've got some amazing cars. You've got Mustangs, you've got yeah. the Pagoda, you've got the Alpha, you've got the IS. Yeah. What's your next bucket list car? Um, the, the dream car has always been a 300 SL Gullwing Merc. Oh. But um, as you know, that's yeah. you know well into seven figures, even yes. in pounds. So yeah. who knows if that will ever happen one day, but you have to dream, right? No, Everything yeah, starts with a dream. This started with a dream and it's happening. So who knows one day, we'll see. Nice, 100%. And why Chicanos? What, what made you choose us and once again Sandeep has not been paid to say any nice words about us as he's coming straight from his heart so why Chicanos? I think look I, I was remote so I didn't even know that much about Chicanos and I did some research online and everything I read sort of just all all roads and all paths led to Chicanos as the E30 specialist in South Africa and so I thought if I'm going to get a car done and I'm going to have it rebuilt. It has to be done by the masters, by the experts. Nice. Um, and, and, and the Chicanos brand is growing. As you know, you know, you guys did really well with Gravity last yeah. year. Uh, I'm going to see you at Gravity yes, again this yes, year. Looking yes, forward yes. to that in August. So it's the whole family cool. will come to come to support you. Nice. So hopefully you'll take some prizes again. And the Chicanos brand just adds to the value of the car. Hopefully, definitely. Yeah. Looking forward to that. It's their first time attending Gravity. So once again, we're going to be doing Gravity. We're going to be doing SEMA. Uh, the build will start soon. The only thing I've started on the build was to pull the motor out. Haven't had a chance to do anything else, but we will start with that build. But clients' cars take preference. Always number one priority. Thank you so much for trusting Thanks. me. No, Thank welcome. you so much for coming on the interview. I really appreciate it. Anything you want to say to our followers and subscribers? No, I think, um, you know, these guys do some amazing work. Um, Chip is a fantastic guy. You know, he says good friend. I also used to laugh when he says that all the time. <laughs> but he's just got that personality that, you know, you, you feel like you've known him your whole life. And uh, they were all coming and, and make you feel part of a team. Um, and you walk around the shop and you can just see the amazing work that they do and all the cars that basically need a new lease on life. And, and rather than ending up in a, in a scrapyard, rather they get back onto the road. For the next generation. For sure. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank cool. you so much. Thank you. Cool. All right. Guys, that was a lucky owner. Sandeep, amazing gentleman, passionate car collector. Really, really glad our paths crossed. And once again, I thank him so much. 
Uh, Sandeep, if you're watching, thank you so much for trusting us and supporting us. Really appreciate it. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to be part of such a special boat. Um, I'm really enjoying it. And once again, thank you guys for watching, subscribing, interacting. You guys are awesome. We're on our way to 20,000 subscribers. And we are going to be pushing out some more content for you. We've just got a lot of big projects that are finishing now. So we've got stuff like a 64 Impala, a Chev Lumina, E28 5 Series. We've got a ton of uh, uh, um, E30s that are coming through as well. So a lot of content. We've got something different, the Toyota 1200 Bucky. So there's so much variety that's coming to the channel. And some of the projects are coming to completion now. We're looking forward to sharing those projects with you guys. And of course, our champions that are always commenting and interacting. And also, I want to bring up someone that comments on every video of ours, the Marrakesh guy. Have you guys seen the Marrakesh guy? The Marrakesh guy comments on all the videos. You guys can see his comments. So I'm actually going to dedicate a special episode to the Marrakesh guy because on every episode he asks for a Marrakesh brown car and we're currently busy with the Marrakesh brown Benz. So that episode is going to be dedicated to you, Mr. Marrakesh man. And hopefully one day I can meet you and find out what is your obsession with this Marrakesh color. Once again, thank you so much guys for watching and tuning in. I will catch you guys on the next episode. And I can't even wipe it because you're going to get dirty-ish. Okay. Now it's going to problem me. I need a cloth. Because it's there and I can see it and it's dirty and I need to clean it. I read the newspaper. <laughs> Okay, chop, don't look at your shoe. Episode, we are we, uh, <laughs> Double clutching again. <laughs> okay, ready? Yeah. One, two. Hi.